brother! Ben, for as long as I've been reading the Harry Potter books, one character in particular has always stood out to me as just not making any sense, like, at all. And that is Filch. And his stupid cat, too. What purpose does he even serve? Like, why is he even allowed to be at Hogwarts? And maybe even more importantly, what is the deal with Mrs. Norris? Well, today, we find out. Charge the cannons, charge the cannons, boom, 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 we are not pirates. Hey, if you'd like to see me, Ben, Derek, and Jordan play as the Chudley Cannons on Rocket League, you can check out the Super Carlin Gaming channel where we answer your questions three times a week. Just check the link in the description. But back to Mortimer Argus Filch. That's not his real name. I just thought it sounded cool. Uh, Hashtag Mortimer Argus Filch? Mortimer has such a nice ring to it though, doesn't it? Just sounds like the kind of guy who wishes he was dead. Or at least the sound of some Someone who wishes all of his wedding guests were dead, am I right? Ah? Huh? No, it's a different story. Anyway, Argus, just Argus, Filch is the caretaker slash custodian slash hall monitor at Hogwarts. And I'm sorry, I've thought about this a lot, but he just does not make even one ounce of sense. Seriously, what even is his job? Just to walk the hallways and catch students breaking the rules and also clean up messes? 24-7? Okay, let's work this out in reverse order. First of all, the 24-7. Because seriously, how many times do we see this guy walking around in the middle of the night? His name literally comes up in the books 279 times, and I'm pretty sure 278 of those are him just catching Harry doing stuff. Oh dear, we are in trouble. And the other time is when, again, he thought the students were out of bed. Students out of bed! Students in the corridor! They are supposed to be out of bed, you blithering idiot! Oh. But he's also supposed to be working all day, right? And yet he's always also out every night. Like, how is he doing this? Does he ever sleep? Next is the fact that he also seems to act as the lone janitor for the entire school, which like, what? Why? Why? This seems almost genuinely mean on a few levels. First of all, just at any given non-magical high school, I'm pretty sure you would have several members of the custodial staff, right? And that's in buildings that aren't the size of castles. I mean, I don't know where you went to high school. Maybe it was a castle, but where I went, good old Cave Spring High, it was about as normal as unicorns aren't. On the other hand, Filch is supposed to clean up a castle's worth of teenage wizard mess all by himself? Shouldn't he at least get some helpers or something, Dumbledore? I mean, we know Dobby had to talk you down on wages, so we know you have some additional funding for extra staff. So yeah, he totally should have some helpers, except no, he shouldn't, because let's circle back to the house elves. He in fact doesn't need helpers because he's not the one who should be doing this at all, because if I recall, the castle already employs an entire staff of house elves whose job it already is to clean stuff up, right? Like, isn't that part of their job outside of just cooking in the kitchens to clean stuff up? Don't they all abandon Gryffindor Tower after Hermione starts hiding clothes? Clothing in the trash to try and secretly free them? And yeah, when Harry walks in from Quidditch one day and gets mud all over the place, Filch is all up in arms because now he's gonna have to clean it up and apparently it's gonna take him hours. Side note, how does anyone get this muddy playing Quidditch? I mean, Quidditch is up in the air, right? And mud is on the ground, so am I understanding mud wrong or flying wrong or both? Either way, brings me to my second point, which is that Filch is a squib and can't do magic, but is nonetheless tasked with not magically cleaning up a school where all of the teachers and students can perform basic cleaning spells. James Potter uses the spell Scourgeify on Snape to fill his mouth with soap, an improper but hilarious use of what sounds like a cleaning charm. Ron uses the spell Turgio to siphon off most of the grease of a gross handkerchief before handing it to Hermione. Flitwick removes an entire swamp from a corridor in about three seconds, and Dumbledore and Slug clean up an entire room wordlessly just by waving their wands. Like, it is clearly super easy to clean stuff with magic, and yet it is taking Filch hours to clean up mud prints? I mean, that is the most basic kind of mess. Why on earth are you making this poor man do stuff by hand? For one, it's mean to him, and two, potentially dangerous for the students. I mean, you're knowingly letting the castle remain dirtier than it has to be, longer than it has to be? I'm legit starting to think Dumbledore actively dislikes Filch. Like, even 
even in his opening remarks to the school, listen to how he phrases his reminder to the students not to do spells in the hallways. Mr. Filch, the caretaker, has asked me for what he tells me is the 462nd time to remind you that all magic is not permitted in corridors between classes. He says it as if he wasn't going to include this information and is only doing it because he happens to have been reminded. But regardless, it's obviously something a member of his staff is extremely stressed about, and rightfully so, I might add, and he is just continuously 461 times ignored it. Although personally, I like to think that Dumbledore is of the opinion that causing a little bit of trouble is to be encouraged as to best enjoy your use. On the other hand, though, you might say Dumbledore is actually very progressive simply because he does employ Filch, a squib who can't perform magic. I mean, it really shows how open Dumbledore is to paying someone for unnecessary manual labor when he already has an entire unpaid workforce employed for that exact purpose. Seriously, Filch, why do you work here? Like, how are you even allowed to work here? As I understand it, squibs aren't even allowed to be educated at the school, right? That is actually true. Squibs can see some things that muggles can't and are allowed to know of and participate in the wizarding world, but they cannot attend Hogwarts. The closest any squib has ever gotten is a guy named Angus Buchanan, who was the third son in a large family, and his siblings covered up his non-magicalness for the first 11 years of his life. They even forged a letter from Hogwarts, snuck him to the school, and got him under the sorting hat before it finally revealed that he was not magical. At which point his father kicked him out of the house, he was raised by muggles, and became the star of the International Scottish Rugby Team. True fictional story. Seriously, you can read all about it on this surprising that it exists at all Scottish rugby page of Pottermore. So getting back to Filch though, that means that he definitely wasn't around the school as a youth, but somehow as an adult still managed to obtain an irrelevant job there, which I guess is as impressive as it isn't impressive? Although at the same time, I'm not even sure why he wants this job. I mean, it appears that he hates kids, and yet year after year, he chooses to work at a place where he constantly complains that he can't torture them? Was it uh, on detention would find you hanging by your thumbs in the dungeons? God, I'll miss the screaming. Okay? He does like one thing, though, and that is his cat, Mrs. Norris who also makes no sense. This cat is unusual in many ways. First, that she has such a weirdly strong connection with Filch. Two, that she seems to have memorized the rules of the castle and Hogwarts, can maybe see through the invisibility cloak and does show up on the Marauder's map. Which may or may not be unique, it's hard to tell because Harry never like says that he sees another animal on the map. Though it does seem like it would be a heck of a lot busier if he could. I mean, can you imagine mail time in the Great Hall? <laughs> But honestly, with all of that going for her, you think she'd be special in some way. And honestly, there are a few explanations that would make her a really interesting cat. Based on the way she acts, she fits the bill perfectly for what is known as a familiar. A familiar is an animal, some say an animal-shaped spirit, that serves a witch or wizard in various ways, whether as servants, messengers, or even spies. Sounds pretty spot on, doesn't it? Well, too bad, because J.K. Rowling herself has written an article on familiars basically just to say that, no, they don't exist in Harry Potter, but thanks for trying. Not to worry, though, there are other options, like say if maybe Mrs. Norris, much like Crookshanks, was part Neasel or even full Neasel? Neasels in Harry Potter Potter look like cats but are magical and have a very high level of intelligence, are independent and occasionally aggressive, and have an uncanny ability to detect suspicious and distrustful people. Like, does that not sound exactly like Mrs. Norris who spends all of her time all day looking for suspicious activity? Or even more recently, the popular theory is that what if Mrs. Norris was a maledictus, which would mean that at one point she was actually a human who had a blood curse that destined her to eventually permanently turn into an animal. And in this case a cat. Nagini, Voldemort's snake, was actually just revealed to be this exact thing, and we'll actually get to see her as a human in the upcoming Fantastic Beast movie. Oh, and I would just love if this was true for Mrs. Norris as well. Like, it would be so cool and offer a good explanation for why Filch has such an intense relationship with his cat. How tragic would that make Filch's story? Like, if Mrs. Norris was actually some loved one of his, or a sister or something, and now he constantly works at a job he hates because it means that his loved one gets to be at Hogwarts, the one place that makes her happy. But no, none of that's true. J.K. Rowling has said herself, if you go back into the archives of her old website, that Mrs. Norris is nothing more than an intelligent and unpleasant 
cat. And if you're holding out hope that, but wait, Maledictus is a new thing, maybe there's still a chance to retcon it, uh, no, because apparently J.K. Rowling has been sitting on the Nagini Maledictus idea for the last 20 years. She's just a cat. That's it. The only other real thing I can point out is that it's possible squibs just have a naturally good relationship with cats. Because beyond Filch, we also have Arabella Fig, who is the local crazy cat lady of Privet Drive. And then we have Umbridge, and while she herself is not a squib, although just barely, am I right? Her brother was, and so perhaps that could help explain her love of cats as like just a tiny nod to him. Because of all people, who is Umbridge's one ally in the school? None other than Filch. Although somehow I'm seriously doubting the nod to her squib brother because that sounds even remotely nice and that just doesn't sound like Umbridge at all. But there you go, Ben. Every reason Filch and Mrs. Norris make just absolutely no sense. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is what do you think? Why does Filch continue to work at Hogwarts? What is the point of him? Does Dumbledore actually dislike him? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! You guys know how the Chudley Cannons aren't pirates, right? Well, now you can buy this poster that totally proves it. In fact, Ben and I will even sign one of them for you. Go check it out today at supercarlinbrothers.store. Guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to like it if you haven't already and subscribe. So you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see how Nagini is a woman, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see how Luna Lovegood might actually be a wolf, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.